Hi guys, welcome to the archive. My name is Matt and this is a quick guide on making your own modular tile storage. These boxes are something you can make on your kitchen table with cheap foam core, a knife and some hot glue. They're designed to be flexible depending on how big you make the shelves, so you can store outdoor tiles like the ones from my grassland video without the details getting flattened over long periods. Or you can make them to fit these simple drawers which perfectly fit all kinds of dungeon and building tiles and give an easy way to grab what you need for game night. Sorry I've been away for the week by the way, I had my first family holiday in years where I got to use the camera to record the beauty of nature. Yeah, they were weirdly vicious. Anyway, it's kind of important to get right angled straight cuts for this build, so I found that a carpenter square and a steel meter ruler, or at least a steel ruler, were useful here. As for materials, the larger the sheets of foam board you can get, the better. The bigger the board, the less scrap foam. That said, cheap is also good because then you care less when you have to add some scrap to the use later pile. So just buy whatever makes sense for your budget. Speaking of which, I am incredibly jealous of how cheap foam core is in the US. It's a third of the price that it is here in the UK. A board about the size you can get at Dollar Tree for $1 costs me about $3. Support the channel on Patreon to help with material costs and I might do more foam core builds for you guys. Also because it's the main reason these videos can be made. Without the support of my generous patrons, I really couldn't afford to do what I do here. Like I said, getting straight cuts is important here, so I've included some things I found worked well that are just as useful for cutting XPS foam. Having a strong light at an angle that doesn't get blocked when you lean over so that you can see what you're doing accurately is useful, especially if you're making your marks in pencil. Dull light is kind of the enemy here and can pretty easily lead to some mistakes. When lining up the cut, a nice trick that I find for making sure that it's dead on is putting the knife or pencil in the right place at the end of the ruler, lining up that end and applying pressure, and then nudging the other side into place against the knife too, so both sides are perfectly lined up before any marking or cutting is done. I also try to make sure that the knife or pencil is upright both times or the accuracy might be slightly off. I find it's always a good idea to cut against a steel ruler. No matter how straight I think I can cut freehand, it probably won't be perfect. The thicker the piece, the more likely the cut will be slightly angled to one side from the other, because it's hard to keep the knife perfectly upright. This is hard to avoid, and why tools like hot wire tables are so good. Cutting from above and while leaning over the piece also means that you can use your body weight to your advantage, rather than having to push down harder on the piece with your arms or hands. If you do need any tools or supplies for the build, buying them through the Amazon links in my equipment list down below helps support the channel for free. I cut a range of different sizes for this build. The measurements for these I've included in the pinned comment of this video. I wanted it to fit inside some shelving units that I'd bought and not waste any space, so I cut them to a height to suit that. The width on the other hand was pretty much decided for me. I needed them to fit 12 inch outdoor tiles with a bit of room on each side so that they wouldn't get crushed in. I found the pieces were plenty stable for indoor use with just one layer of foam core, but if you did want them to be tougher, you could double layer the foam core on the outside, which makes them a hell of a lot sturdier. Cutting techniques aside, to get started I took the back and both side pieces and then measured and drew in some lines to show where I was going to glue each shelf, as well as a line at the top so I didn't forget the thing needed a roof. I made the base first, hot gluing the bottom into place with one side piece and the back piece. To make sure I could easily access each piece as I was gluing them, I glued in each shelf one at a time from the bottom. I decided to glue in the back first to line it up, and then add a line of glue along the side and pull the shelf piece down to line up where I wanted it. To give it that extra bit of resilience, I added a thin layer of glue over the connection on top too. The top piece I added in pretty much the same way, but this time avoided the ceiling glue at the top to give a cleaner finish. Attaching the door I wanted to be done in a way that could be easily repaired if it broke, but also so that it wouldn't end up crushing any of the grass or anything on the pieces inside of it. To achieve this I used some serial card strips, folded them in half and hot glued them to the side that I wanted the hinge on. I made sure the strip lined up with the front of the piece when folded and then hot glued the door to each strip in turn, starting with the top and bottom and making sure that they were lined up and that the door would, well, close. Finally, to give the piece a satisfying way to open and close, I added some magnets to the door frame and to the edge of the door. I 
I added a paint dot to the magnets on the door frame to make sure they line up with the door itself before cutting a slot onto the back of the door for them. You can easily add a handle to these doors if you want, but I haven't really decided what I'm going to be doing with them yet, so I haven't yet. I also made a version that I designed for dungeon tile storage, so I put together some drawers using serial card, chipboard and hot glue. Mainly because I'm lazy and it was faster, but it still works fine. Let's me bang more out in an evening. I kept the um, colourful sides of the serial card on the inside of the drawers and used chipboard for the base. It isn't pretty, but if this really bothers you that much, you could just buy some plain card to make it with. I'm probably not going to bother, it really doesn't bother me that much. I folded the walls of the drawers around the outside of the base to make sure there'd be enough space inside the drawers for the tiles, and I wouldn't accidentally make it too thin and be unable to put the tiles in. The end walls I glued on after the sides, to the bottom of the base and also to the inside of the side walls. This way I didn't have to faff around making them slightly larger to fit around the other walls. Each wall I cut to the right size with some extra overlapping at the sides to use as a tab to glue into place. I scored these tabs with a knife before folding them to make sure they would fold nice and straight. And that's pretty much all there was to it. The shelves are amazing for letting you store more detailed tiles safely without taking up much more space. But the drawers are awesome for grab and go during a game. There's no more sort of delicately balancing a large pile of tiles as you wobble downstairs and inevitably drop them sooner or later. Plus they can fit a lot of the weirder shaped tiles like the roof tiles or battlements because everything works on this 3 inch standard width. The only thing I wouldn't bother making one with shelves for are the temple stairs and mountain blocks. Those you can pretty much just stack in any old box and they're good to go. They're great like that. Please subscribe, like and share and until next time I'll be in the archive.